off and that connector is hot and on my table, ouch. Hello and welcome back. So, um, budget brushless. So as we've seen, the drone ECs uh, were not powerful enough. So the motor I was using uh, actually turns out that I'd, I'd counted it wrong. So this is a six pole, 10 slot motor, and it has quite a high amperage, much, much, much higher than claimed. It claimed a maximum of 33, which means when I was using it at half speed, it should have been drawing about 15 amps, but it melted two ESCs. So obviously, Someone's not quite right. Also, these ESCs, they just had a flat plate heat sink that wasn't very thick. Um, uh, this one had a heat sink on both sides. This one had a heat sink on one side. They were using dried out rubbish thermal paste and would have been absolutely fine in a drone or a helicopter up in the air flying around at, you know, tens of miles an hour, lots of wind and airflow, uh, especially in these temperatures where it's nice and cold. So they would have been fine, but uh, in a garage, on a crawler, no airflow, and with a motor that's draining too much, a little bit of a problem. So, we have one of these. This is a car ESC. This is the um, T-Sky I think it's called the T-Rex um, and it's 120 amp apparently, uh, brushless, censored and sensorless ESC. It costs about £20 off Amazon, so I'm not expecting, I'm not expecting miracles, but I do know I can program this with a Hobbywing program card, which I have here. And that will allow me to set uh, quite high timing uh, because I'll need it for the motor that I'm using and it should allow me to set the right amount of punch and instant reverse and everything else. It comes with three wires that are correctly labelled but incorrectly coloured. Um, so, so normally I think blue and orange are the other way around. So blue is normally A and C is normally orange doesn't really matter because we're going sensorless and the motor that I've chosen is a Surpass Hobbies C3542 and it's a 1450kV. I couldn't get it in a faster kV so I'm going to have to probably run a 17 tooth pinion and I might even need to swap my spur to get the wheel speed back although I'm hoping the extra timing should speed it up. Now, I measured it with a ruler, but I'm just going to grab some calipers and see if this will just mount up on a Traxxas ESC, which it should do. So we can just check that. So if it's a 25mm bolt pattern, all is good. And that is measuring, oh, a bit warm today, that is measuring 25mm. So that will just bolt in in the normal standard motor clocking. So we don't need to mess about with Tamiya um, motor plates, so that's good. I have a new soldering iron for this. Uh, my old one broke during the last series and I had to use my backup iron, which was a 60 watt iron that basically wasn't good enough to fix the helicopter drone ESCs because it can't do surface mount, but this one does. Um, it's LiPo powered, so I can plug this into a 3S LiPo and it will operate well it'll heat up a little bit slower but once it heats up it's all right now given that it gets to 300 degrees in about 10 or 15 seconds on mains power and mains power i think the power supply is a 24 volt it should only take about 20 30 seconds to get to 300 degrees and once it's there it's there so that's going to be a lot of fun now because we're going with a heavier motor and a heavier esc in order to be lighter than what I had before, which is the Axe system, I also wanted to try some different batteries. So I've got these little GNB 550 milliamp 3S batteries. I'm not sure if I'm going to use these for the first bits of testing, and I might actually create a um, parallel adapter so that I use two of them, but they are much lighter and much smaller than my existing batteries 
although they are only a quarter of the uh, ampere, uh, milliamps. They're an 80C discharge with 160C burst, which gives me um, 80 times 0.55 is 44 amps constant discharge, which is enough to run this motor at a about half speed constantly um, but it, it also has 160 C discharge which is 88 amps and technically this motor can only draw 72 amps um, so we've got a bit of a buffer the ESC should be able to handle all of that because it's a 120 amp ESC so I guess right now it's time to shift the camera to the workbench and start playing with the soldering iron. Let's weigh some of this stuff. Hopefully it'll be on screen. The axe system is 372 grams. The new system is 215 grams so we're saving 150 grams so that's that's a that's a good start and then if we look at batteries these tiny little batteries are 52 grams and my other batteries are around about 190 grams so all in all that's a saving of nearly 300 grams off a crawler that weighs about 3.3 kilos so we're about to take 10 percent of the weight off the crawler but on this crawler there's something else to counterbalance the motor you'll notice that i have um brass knuckles uh not knuckles brass portal covers and brass c hubs now i've got some aluminium c hubs coming so i might leave those brass ones on for now but i should be able to remove these portal covers which will take another 80 grams off I think and if I can get away with removing these C hubs that'll take away another 120 grams so that's 200 grams so all in all we're lopping uh, 500 grams off this crawler which should make it um, super super light for a TRX4 based crawler and also this battery this battery will find some way to mount this battery in um, and that will just sit as as low as possible somewhere near the front rather than on the side although actually if i did mount it on the side it would balance the weight of the esc on the other side and would be super low so maybe we'll look at that as well because i'm not sure how much 55 grams is going to upset the balance of something that weighs about well what we're we talking about 2.9 kilos so it, it it might be fine Right, let's get into it. We need to make a decent connection, um, but unfortunately this has come with bullets on. Or maybe not unfortunately, it sort of depends on your point of view. Um, for me, it's definitely unfortunately. So I'm going to cut these off with a scalpel to get the heat shrink off and then where the bullet is, just take the bullet off. So that should come off relatively easily. And I might even get away with <clears throat> desoldering the bullets. So we'll try that first because it would be nice to be able to put them back on later. I don't know if you have done much of this at home. Please, please tell me in the comments if you have, if you know a better way to do this. Uh, if this is useful to you, then please tell me because I'm trying to make this channel as useful as possible. And straight away we can see our... Our motor wires are a little bit loose. Soldering iron plugged into a Dean's to XT60 to an XT60 to a whatever the soldering iron is, DC5225. Uh, with a soldering iron, you press to turn it on and it gets hot. And yeah, that's 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 reasonably quick for something that's running off a LiPo battery. But the great thing is um, it gives me lots of maneuverability. So on mains power, the soldering iron can usually keep a temperature that's 
around about three degrees of what it needs to be on lipo power it's around about a five to ten degree variation i'm just um cleaning up the tip and then hopefully hopefully we can try and desolder these connectors so get some solder for the heat transfer looks like they've gone to town on soldering these on so we'll see see where we get so just trying to get some heat into the connector to see if i can just prise it off yep so that's one so we'll be able to reuse those which is great so we'll be able to do a motor connection today and then reuse these later on i have three bullet connectors for if i crack and buy a side one winder now this motor the the specs are very very similar to the Holmes hobby revolver but this motor is a lot cheaper so i don't expect it to operate like a Holmes hobby revolver but uh, at the very least it should have some of the qualities it is a 14 pole 12 slot motor it has an absolutely ton of um, turns in there which is fantastic more turns than I can count which is great because I've got a, a lower limit of about eight and a half so that's that's absolutely fantastic um, right ESC now it doesn't really matter which way these wires go on because we are going sensorless however I do want to keep keep some some sensible order so I'm going to put the ESC down tip the wires over get my motor and go one one to each one try not to cross them over now I think I will have to cross them for uh, getting the right rotation but the first thing I'm going to do is just solder everything up so I'm pushing one wire down on the other and that should transfer heat between the two heat up both wires and then they should um, just squash together we're not using solder to blob it and create a huge blob of solder we're just trying to push the two sets of wires together so that they make a connection and we can see there that's made a connection now this is just a test we're going to run this at uh, very low amperage to start with we're not going to try and do anything silly um, the main thing is we're going to see if we can get it together get it programmed and get it running on the bench and then we'll see about putting it in a crawler because my main concern is the ESC will get a bit too hot um, although nothing is going to get very hot if I let my soldering iron stay dirty so I've just cleaned it off just got a bit more solder on to transfer the heat they've melded together one of them has transferred enough heat to burn my finger and that that is that Right, we have a battery, a nice powerful battery. We have a motor, we have a receiver. And we also have some electrical tape underneath the motor. Um, this motor is much bigger than the one in the previous videos. So if it does jump off the table for any reason, that is going to hurt me a lot more than the previous one did. Not that it hurt me too much, but enough for me to um, have to pause the camera and have a little swear and then you know compose myself so i'm just wrapping up these wires because I, I don't want to heat shrink them quite yet and again we're just testing and the trick here will be to not run anything at full throttle for more than about a second or indeed at all so the first thing i'm going to do is program this motor so i'm going to get my phone out uh, program this esc and uh, just um, get the information that i need to program the esc so i've got a little table on my phone uh, it is it is the hobby wing instructions but um, this is using the same firmware as a hobby wing z run 
but I think the hardware is much, much um, more budget and less quality controlled because these these do tend to be um, known for being a bit pants. So the ESC has turned itself straight on, so the switch was set to on. The program card has come up with the correct values. So that's saying it's got forward reverse with brake. So we want to change that to crawler. We're going to change the drag brake force to 100%, which will be interesting. We're going to set the voltage cutoff to as high as possible. We're going to set the start mode punch to as low as possible because we don't want to overload this motor yet. The, the max brake force we want to set to 100%. We want to set the max reverse force to 50% because it's a quite slow motor. Initial brake force will be set to the drag brake force. Neutral range is narrow. Timing uh, we're going to crank up because we've got such a big motor and we're going to make sure that overheat protection is on. That is all set. I've just been clicking those. I'm going to turn this off now. Now we are going to try not to repeat the mistakes of yesteryear. And... I say yesteryear, I mean earlier this week, where I plugged this into the steering of the receiver, played with the throttle, nothing happened, then I twisted the steering and it decided to go full blast and bounce the motor off the table. So we'll turn our transmitter on and we will turn our ESC on. Now this ESC looks like it's it's bound because it's turned blue. And so it's, so it seems like the So the drag brake's pretty brutal. It also seems like the the neutral range is, is a bit tight, so we might loosen off the neutral range. But we're going to try try a senseless start. That's that's pretty good. And it's also turning clockwise, which is great. That's exactly what we wanted. 